Happy Monday. Yes, indeed. Uh, sorry, uh, the thing was went longer. I was reading to both children tonight, and so it took longer for me to do bedtime. Yes. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Uh, we took a week off as uh, Carol and I had our family uh, picnic or camping up in, up in Acadia. And it was great, and it took up the whole week, and we would have been back for game on Thursday, but it took us longer than we anticipated to get home, and so we didn't share time. So, I don't think that you need to apologize for taking a vacation. Oh, I'm not apologizing for taking a vacation. <laughs> I, I am apologizing for not keeping my word about being back in time for game on Thursday. Ah, stuff happens. Yeah. You get behind schedule. Yep. Anyway, welcome to Pineapple. Um, it might just be the three of us tonight. We'll see. Eric usually shows up late anyway, so who knows? Yeah, after we bully him out of the chat. No, that's 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 Chris. That's Chris. Oh, Eric, right? I'm constantly getting those two mixed up, and I don't know why. <laughs> but Eric usually just chats within the chat. That's true. Which is what you would do in a chat, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. My brain doesn't always process things correctly before I speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since it's the three of us right now, I don't know that we need to do like a full introduction. But, uh, but well, Dave asked a question before, after you left. Oh, I didn't know that. that. We decided to wait till uh, till we started to. What was what was the question? 
we were talking about weird eating habits, and my question is was are you the type of person that separates out your Skittles by color and then eat them in a certain order? Or, as I put it, are you a barbarian who just takes a handful and just stuffs it in their mouth? That's a bit ableist. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, I guess we know your answer then, apparently. <laughs> Apparently you're very what? meticulous. <laughs> I, uh, so I do actually separate out a little bit. Um, in that, like, the uh, the grape ones, I separate out the grape ones because I don't like them as much. So I separate those out and I eat them first. And then I'll separate out, like, the lemon ones because I also don't like them as much. But then what's left... It's just a bunch of things that um, I like and can't see the difference between. So at that point, the whole system breaks down and I just eat. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> so I only eat like two or three at a time and always make sure I have like a red and a purple together because I like the flavor that that makes and a, a green and a yellow have to go together I can't remember the other colors off the top of my head but like I always make sure they're two like paired colors I think one of the, the flavors time. is orange orange is the it's the fifth right okay. so I probably do like I'm gonna close this door yeah I don't I don't remember how I do the orange but I, it's been a forever since I ate them but uh they also like hurt my cheeks, so I can't eat them very often. Yeah, okay, but... that makes sense. <laughs> so I am so happy that they brought back lime finally. I hated the green apple. That was oh, probably really? my least favorite of the of the Skittles flavors. The flavor? The green apple. I'm so glad that they br they brought back lime. Mm. Um, yeah, I hate. The grape, that's my least favorite. And then I go to cherry next. And then usually lemon, orange, and then lime last. I eat them in my, uh, you know, favorite last. I think, I think I frequently, I don't know whatever happens to the orange ones. I know that orange is a flavor. But I don't know if I end up actually mixing them into the yellows or if I end up actually mixing them into the remainder. Okay. I love artificial orange flavor, like orange Tic Tacs. Oh, it's, my God. Oh, orange Tic Tacs are amazing. <laughs> artificial orange flavor is so much better than oranges. What? It's true facts. I'm Those sorry. are strong words there, sir. <laughs> I would say I'm an equal opportunist for orange flavor. Hmm. I appreciate both. <laughs> I love me a good orange. But yeah, that's that's the question I posed to my um to my reports today in one of our one of our chats. <laughs> it's like <laughs> It's really funny because the majority of my reports love the grape flavor. I just, I'm not a big fan of grape flavor. So I was like, you could have all of the grapes when I see you in person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any flavor that I don't like in the Skittles. The grape is definitely my least favorite of them. I, uh, I don't like openly dislike them though like skittles are a pretty good candy in that regard like all of the flavors are acceptable unlike uh starburst i don't like so carol and i like opposite types of starburst which is handy because i have that person now because i used to in high school uh, my friend brett he liked the lemon and the cherry ones, and I liked the strawberry and the orange ones. And so we would split a pack evenly, like, every time. Um, and then once 
I didn't have him around anymore. Um, I didn't have anyone to split the Starburst with anymore, so I didn't eat them very much. Uh, and now, and now I've married Carol, who also prefers the lemon and the cherry ones. It's true, but I like them all. Yeah. Tim's motivations have finally been revealed, Carol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he picked me. <laughs> But yeah. So, bef yeah, before the chat, we talked about Nutty Bars mm -hmm. as well. And I was asking Carol if she likes peeling the layers of the of the Nutty Bars. And she looked at me like I was crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I used to peel those, uh, you know, what are those wafer cookies that are like the sugar wafers? Yeah, sugar wafers. Yeah. I used to peel those. I love well, peeling those. It's the same concept. I love peeling those kind too. Because kind of nutty same. bars are really kind of the same thing, but with peanut butter layers instead of um, sugar layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like the ratio is different. With the with the sugar wafers, when you peel them, you get like a better ratio of the sugar filling. Yeah, I can see that. Like, um, it's kind of like, um, Reese's peanut butter cups, like the, the original size ones are, perfect. have like the perfect ratio, Yep. but the, like the minis are just like too much peanut butter to the amount of chocolate that you get, in my opinion. And I also think that like the king size ones is too much peanut butter to the, cho to the chocolate as well. Yeah. And the thins like, have too like much king chocolate. Size? They're not the king size bars aren't different size cups. Just... No, like the the deep ones. Oh, the deep ones. Yeah, I. Yeah. The, whatever, um, they're called, big I, whatever they're called, I call them the king size ones. The, the larger, the super cups, or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The king um, size. But yeah, because the king size ones are just four instead of two. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, um, no, I think that I th I personally I, I like the mini ones. I think that those are the ideal ratio that those and um close second is the shapes when they have the okay. oh yeah the, the seasonal shapes are the best See, i i on i think that's that's too much peanut butter for the for the chocolate to be honest mm. really but, that's amazing <laughs> on the subject of reese's peanut butter cups use them to make s'mores people they are <laughs> delicious if you make s'mores with with peanut butter I cups mean, instead of uh hershey's chocolate I like that kind of thing <laughs> I'm the I'm the person that will take peanut butter, put it on the graham cracker, put my slab of chocolate down, and then put my marshmallow on top, and then peanut butter on the other graham cracker. I'm I'm actually so I'm not a purist generally, but with s'mores I kind of am. Like, no, th those things aren't s'mores. Those things are s'more inspired. Like, once you start doing things like putting peanut butter or Reese's cups in there. What I will do is I like um, getting the cinnamon graham crackers instead of the honey ones. Because I, I like the I like that little bit of cinnamon in there. Yeah, then you get you get kind of like the, the Mexican chocolate vibe, kind of. Yeah. But, yeah. like, but that's it. Like, that's, that's as far as I will stray and still call it a s'more. Okay, fair enough. You know the <laughs> best way to eat a s'more? Is to Deep light a marshmallow on fire <laughs> and then eat a piece of chocolate while you watch it burn. <laughs> she is not okay with s'mores. I absolutely hate marshmallows. marshmallows. Yeah. Oh, like, I love everything marshmallows. Marshmallow. They are so gross. Like the texture, I just, I can't. Wow. You should, I know that you're, you, you said that you're a s'mores purist, but you should also try Nutella instead of chocolate Ooh. sometime. Ooh. Hazelnut. You know what? I'm actually willing to try that one. I'm willing to try that. I have some Nutella think, over there. Actually, yeah, just I have spread Nutella a little bit of Nutella on the on the um, graham cracker. Put yeah. your milk. We have graham your... crackers and He's we have like, Nutella. I have Nutella. I have marshmallows. And I think we still have graham crackers. Everything. Unless Nutella ate them all. Yeah, you gonna go light a marshmallow on the stove? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that at some point during pineapple and come check in. Yeah. Oh yeah, you guys have you guys have a gas stove. Yeah. Yep. I wish I still had gas. Oh my god. 
that's the thing is like we're trying to switch out and get rid of our propane and oil distributor entirely because we don't yep. like that. Oh, okay. But I refuse to give up literal fire yeah. Yeah. for my stove. Yeah. Gas is so much better to, to cook on. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I do miss about like my old house was having a gas range. Yeah, I do not. I do not like electric. Yeah. We've cooked on the wood stove a couple of times. That's true. That's we have. Cool. But there's, there's so much less control there. I know. But it's fun. Yeah, it's a lot moving the pots on and off. Mm -hmm. But it's really, um, you know, using the using like cast iron, get the cast cast iron nice and hot, and then you can kind of yeah, move I it did a, to the side. I did a roast in the cast iron. Uh, yeah. Dutch oven on top of the wood stove. Yeah, nice. that's that's what we use. Like that's what we do mm -hmm. with stuff like that. Because all of our, um, we're slowly getting to the point where all of our stuff is cast iron anyway. Yeah. I took two cast so iron can, yeah. pans with us to camping. Nice. Yep. How's the uh, Dutch oven I gave you? you haven't tried it yet? I haven't, I haven't used, used it yet. yet. I haven't used it yet, but I am making a roast tomorrow. Nice. Mm -hmm. So that's probably when it will get its first real test. I don't like the top on that, unfortunately. Mm. Oh, really? It, it's got like the little like the teeth on the top to, to help with the water condensation to... Uh, to drip off but it's a pain in the butt to season because you take a paper towel with with oil and then you have paper towel bits on the <laughs> <laughs> on the little teeth that's frustrating you know what how i get around that is honestly i use the spray oil because once you know once it's sprayed it's functionally just oil like yeah and so but usually you can get to it do pretty the even coating that way Usually w with that one, I would um, take uh, Crisco, hmm. and hmm. I would season it with Crisco. That makes sense. I also don't like. I'm very strict about keeping it seasoned, so I don't have to. Like, I ha I I don't have to keep seasoning it as strongly every time. Like, like that's why I don't scrub them. I don't use soap. I don't I don't scrub them. Well, you're not supposed to use soap on. Yeah. Yeah. On them. Oh, it's her mom be... keeps telling me, "Oh, well, these are newer. These are newer ones, and the newer soaps and everything, and they're fine. You can totally do that." And I'm like, "Nope, no, not falling for that." Not when would mom? It. I don't. Mom never washed her cast iron with soap. She told me that the new uh, that the the newer soaps don't have the problem anymore, and so you can do that. And she was like. She was commenting on me not like refusing to wash them under any circumstances. I don't believe that because newer soaps are, are designed to break down oils even faster. Right? Yeah. And that's what the season thing is. Like, <laughs> I feel like something must have been missed in that conversation because mom was strict about not washing the cast iron. Like you can rinse it in water, but that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean you can use um like a scotch a scotch bright pad but that's the <laughs> most abrasive you can do yeah 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 i bought some carbon steel pans that i need to, that the i didn't season properly that i need to uh re-season shoot mm. Yeah, so I end up not I end up not seasoning it before every I, I end up not frequently seasoning it any re seasoning it anyway. So once I like once it's been used enough, that sp quick spray layer is, is plenty, in my opinion. Well yeah. As long as you're not doing like acidic foods and stuff in it. Yeah. Then yeah. and you're not soaking it for long periods of time, then yeah. you should be fine. I, I don't soak them. If I if I absolutely need to use soaking as a factor, um, I still don't soak them. What I do is I put some water in and heat it up, and then yep. scrape it with that. And so I don't yep. I don't I don't end up soaking it. I just kind of 
<laughs> make the water stronger. We do have a couple that need to be reseasoned, though. We do, they yeah. Are. They're set aside. I got. I do yeah. got to reseason those. Give them a real solid go. Do you have a uh, um? What's it called? The grinder? No. No, I don't. One of those with a paint removal pad. Mm. <laughs> takes can strip the seasoning off in no time flat. That's how I um that's how I stripped my uh my twelve inch. Oh nice. So um I'll have to look into that. If you want to <laughs> um I can lend you my grind my angle grinder and, and uh and a paint remover. Yeah, that'd probably pad. be really handy. I do need to I do need to I tried to make do with just <coughs> scrubbing it hard and and reseasoning it, but it didn't work. Oh, well. it's that's that's a pain. I I had bought um some metal bristle brushes for mm -hmm. for a um for a power drill, and it just took too long. And I was yeah. finally I was like, forget it. I have an angle grinder with <laughs> with paint stripping pads. I'm just gonna <laughs> go to town on it. And I was like, it took like thirty seconds. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. I'll have to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take you up on that then. Definitely could use that. Oh. Then I, if you have a if you have a burner, like on your on your grill, you season it out on on the the oh, side burner on your on your on your grill so that you don't sm like smoke up the house. Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, we don't have a grill with a side burner. No. Or even like, um, but we do have a fire yeah, pit. Like, yeah, we you do can do it on a fire pit. pit. Yeah. And we got that thing now that we can put over it. Yep. But as long as you can get it up to about 500 degrees, mm. you're good. That's probably good. Mm. Yeah, probably good. I mean, it's all I have over there for that is pine, but I do have some hardwood that is intended for in the house that I could use. I think that the fire is going to be more than 500 degrees, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it'll be an issue. No. Mm -hmm. Man, I am disappointed. So we, the reason for those of you at home, uh, the reason we moved pineapple to eight o'clock, it was originally scheduled to be at nine, is because uh, some of the people who we started pineapple for, uh, the people in the offline group who who insisted on us doing a chat show like this. Uh, were eight, more readily available at 8 than at 9. And they have yet to show up for it. Mm -hmm. They haven't shown up to a single one. No! <laughs> Wait, wasn't Jacob here for one? Oh, you know what? Maybe Jacob That's right, was he did one. show up late for one. Yeah. And then I think he had to leave early. Maybe he'll show up yeah. late today. <laughs> oh. I don't know, he's still offline. <laughs> yep. We, uh, Carol and I are still kind of recovering from Paracon over the weekend. So we went to Acadia last week. We were there. Uh, we drove up on Monday morning, right? Uh, I drove up on Monday morning, camped, and did, you know, the whole Acadia thing all week until Thursday. Came home Thursday night. And then we're home on Friday, and then Saturday went to Connecticut for Paracon, which was a paranormal convention, uh, uh, which was a blast. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. But we got home late last night from that. And so mm -hmm. we're still kind of recovering from all the travel. Yep. And then I had to go to work this morning. And <laughs> she had to go to work this morning. <laughs> yeah, and I had, I had things sketched up, because we, we had left the house in the care of Grizz during all of that time and uh, there were things that did not get done so <laughs> I'm playing catch up this week oh, I didn't even know paranormal conventions were a thing until I started reading Tall Tales did you know about these? I did not do you even do you like care about the paranormal is this a thing that you're interested in? Uh, not really. I had a friend from high school who did, like, ghost hunting stuff for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. But, um, 
Have you looked into that house in Gardner? The mansion? That haunted mansion? Um, There's a haunted mansion in Gardner? I did not know that. <clears throat> yeah, some company bought it and they made some like attraction out of it. And apparently you can pay to stay overnight in it too. SK Haunted Victorian Mansion. Interesting. Yes. It's a beautiful building. You should tell Nick about that. I should tell Nick about that. I'm sure he's knows about it, but 7,000 square foot mansion both of 10 bedrooms and took 100 men a year and a half to build. It says. Oh. So, uh, Nick, that he's referring to is Nick Grossman. He's, uh, the, so the two guys that host the, uh, to host Paracon uh, down in Connecticut, and Salem Paracon, which is having its first event this this year up in Salem, Mass, in November, which we will be at. So feel free to hit us, hit us up on that. Um, is uh, they build themselves as the showman and the shaman. Uh, George, uh, Charles, Other way around. Yeah, the shaman and the showman. Uh, there you go. Charles is a promoter. Like that's that's his job and has been for a long time. And his skill set. He's really good at it. Um, and Nick is the shaman. And so they, they work together on doing these, these paranormal conventions. Um, and they do some paranormal investigations and some haunted tours and things like that as well. Um, but Nick like has his own company that specific just spends all of their time. Like, if someone is feels like they're being haunted or, or is concerned that they have some kind of demonic presence or whatever, they can call Nick's group to come in and see if they can cleanse it. Uh, and they also do things like hang out at, at haunted mansions and haunted sites like this and just kind of take pictures and everything. So they they probably would be really interested. I'm sure he knows about it, though. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He's much more connected to that <clears throat> stuff up here than I am so the fact that I don't know it I don't think I, he needs me to tell him <laughs> they have rent overnight weekly and monthly rentals oh man it's amazing for your own safety please do not antagonize the spirits of this home in any way well, there goes half of the TV shows that you were telling me about. <laughs> right? That's what they all do. Yeah, they tried. To, they were trying to sell that house for like years and years before uh, this company bought, ended up buying it and make, you know, renovating it. Um, and then making it, they made it, that attraction out of it. Um, I think, I believe SK Pierce was a furniture maker, no? Yeah. Well, it, it was that... it's Chair City is kind of its nickname. Its yeah. Um, nickname. I was going to say, for the people that aren't local, Gardner was considered the furniture capital of New England um, yep. a, a long time ago. So they have their roots with furniture making. Um, they're... I... Still don't think that they have really fully recovered from like the the warehouse or the factory, you know, collapse that a lot of uh, New England towns have had suffered from. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I was gonna say, if you have, if you're into antique furniture, there is a very good chance that. An antique that you may have was made in Gardner. Huh. True. <clears throat> yeah, see, I don't know all of this stuff yet. I'm still kind of learning the region because I'm not I'm not from New England. So there's a lot of stuff that I just, you know, never would have... You know, it's one of those things where it's like when you live outside of New England, all you hear about is that New England is like... Boston, which is only important if you're talking about the revolution, and then people who commute to New York City, and then, like, if you go north, there's cold woods, and, like, that's New England. Cold woods. That's, 
for an outsider, that's what New England is. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. So, like, when you start talking about, like, oh, this place is known for, like, its furniture, and this place is known for this, and Toy Town, I guess, is Winchenden's big claim to fame. Yep. I'm still, like, learning that what the history behind any of that is. I, I, I honestly don't know what most of it's about. At the risk of upsetting some people, I am going to say this. But the further north you go in New England, the more redneck you get. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Steven just jumped into Divinity. <laughs> what the heck, man? <laughs> we need we know what's, what's important. Yeah. Right? Priorities, people. <laughs> We're going to call him out publicly on stream. That's right. <laughs> Man. Alex is online and she's not in with us. That's true. Grizz Nobody can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Grizz has not ever joined. Yeah. When we first told him about it, he was like, oh yeah, that sounds like cool idea and that was it but he's not gonna like not play his games to do it <laughs> so do we have any topics tonight or just i have some yeah we just um, chatting? i actually just rolled my die just to see and what i rolled was most confusing game or franchise Most confusing how? Like, confusing as why was this game made? <laughs> or, like... I'm going to say follow? that there's... And you're... It's open to interpretation. Hmm. So if it's, like, most confusing, like... Why was this game made? I'm gonna I'm gonna say though any of any waifu game that you that you could think of. <laughs> it's like why why? Okay. <laughs> What's that one game that's like billed as a <clears throat> uh, like super kawaii romance thing, but is actually like a horror? Oh yeah, uh, Tripper loves that one. I know. Um, Such a weird game. I know Monica is from it, but I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, um, I can't remember. It's like, it's super long. Well, let me, let me ask him. Oh, yes, hun, I did message him. Um, okay. I'm going to ask him right now. In the pineapple discussion... So I think Trip is currently melting. I think he's still that's in true. Texas. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Doki Doki Literature Club. That's the one. Yeah. The Google search I did was literally video game, romance, horror, Monica. Yep. And that yep. first result, Doki Doki Literature Club. Yep. It's like totally billed as a romance game, but is actually like a super bloody serial killer game. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I, uh... See, when I think about, like, and I mean, those are those are obviously valid and confusing video games. <laughs> when I think about confusing video games, though, I think about ones where, like, I don't understand what's going on in the story. Mm -hmm. Or, like, how it relates. Like, that's what I assumed the question was about. I thought the question was looking for things like Zelda. Like, the Zelda series. 
You don't understand the Zelda series? The, the timelines and the oh, things. Oh, yeah, that's like, true. Like, how do these relate to each other and yeah. everything. They, they, Unravel did a whole video just about that, and it was mm-hmm. It was, it was hilarious. a hilarious video. <laughs> But yeah, I assumed that's what the question was asking for, was things like that, but I don't know. Um, Who asked that question? Uh, I think Eric. Oh, okay. Eric's not, that Eric doesn't really elaborate on his questions. Sure. <laughs> oh, no, it was Alex. Oh, okay. Yeah, she said, most confusing game storyline or whole franchise. Well, the storyline, yeah, that kind of tells you what the meaning was. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I sometimes rephrase things for my list. <laughs> I would just say, like, any of the old school, like, 80s Nintendo, like, action games, it's like they just throw you into it and you're like, I have no idea why I'm shooting these guys, but I'm just going to go with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> what so am the, I doing? So what do the buttons that, do? Other things where people are just like, oh, yeah, according to the official book that came with the Sega, you know, the, the Mario Brothers game, uh, this character is this. And you're just like, there were books? <laughs> I just I just was, like, dropped into a zine. It was like, somehow I'm going to save a princess by jumping on turtles and mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that's just what's happening today. <clears throat> yep. I don't remember there being books. Definitely didn't get a book. <laughs> there were player guides. Like, the that came in with the cartridges. I mean, I were guess... They? Yeah. We'd I know they had, like, a play. hotline. Like, you could call people. <laughs> they had people whose, like, entire job was to play through... All of these for games. Nintendo Power, <laughs> yeah, so that you could call up the helpline and they could like give you a walkthrough for certain levels. Yeah, there's a documentary about what they had to go through to to work for yeah. the Nintendo Power Hotline. I think that's on Netflix. I think it was called Video Video Games the the movie or something. Yeah, we watched the mm-hmm. documentary. It was really cool. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. But yeah, it was on Netflix. I'm trying to think of other one video of my, games that have confusing stories. One of my favorite video games, though, is <clears throat> weird. I think weird often turns into confusing for people. Uh, and it is Earthbound. Mm. I loved Earthbound. But, my God, what is going on in half of Earthbound? Like... It's it's so great and it's it's such like it's such an acid trip in the midst of being so great. It's also very highly highly sought after uh, cartridge. That's true. Yep. I don't remember how I played it because it was not that long ago. It was uh the it's it was available probably an in an emulator. Yeah. It was, it was probably an emulator. It was uh my roommate when I lived in Amherst actually. When I first moved there, so it would have been about 2009 I played it. Which hopefully was legally obtained. Of course it was. (laughs) Sorry, we can't promote. I tried to play that on an emulator. I I mean, I'm not going to promote it, but I'm going to say, you know, his decisions were his decisions. I don't... Yep. I didn't didn't ask... I'm just saying we... I didn't ask how he sourced his games or his Wii. We can't promote. Just... <laughs> Folks at home, don't pirate your video games. <laughs> Be good people, unlike my husband here. <laughs> I wasn't pirating it. I, I pirated my music, thank you. Not my games. Get it right. <laughs> I don't anymore. I, I I came to the conclusion some years ago that as part of my faith, uh, I needed to have um, an, a, a relationship with the government in which I showed at least some 
me moderate level of respect. And so I stopped working jobs under the table and stopped pirating media. Still working on the speed limit thing. But those two got those taken care of right away. <laughs> Speaking of speed limit. Uh oh. So for my um <laughs> For my job, I have to I have to go through background checks. Right. Oh, I think you. And one of the things is, you have to report tickets over two hundred and fifty dollars or any time any arrests. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not even gonna apply for any of this stuff because. So my things were. I have to put. I have to put tickets down on those forms and then every time the investigators like why'd you put this down i'm like because it was more than 250 dollars right. you're like oh <laughs> and then the question that follows is what have you done to to stop to not do this again basically <laughs> i try not to speed <laughs> okay, that's good enough of an answer, and then they move on. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not even gonna mess with that whole topic, uh, like subject. I'm never. I'm not gonna apply for like security clearance. Which is a good thing that I'm not running for office, despite the desire, occasional desire to do so. But like, yeah, no, I. um... I remember how much two of my tickets were, like, ever. And that's because they were ridiculous. <laughs> like, So it's, yeah, it's to the best of your knowledge, like, if you don't, if you legitimately don't remember something, they're going to find it, but they'll ask you about it, and you all you say is, like, oh, yeah, I forgot about those. I, you know, that was so long ago that I don't remember getting them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember getting them, but I'm not going to memorize numbers. Like, are you? Kidding? No, you have to remember the date, like the oh, the, yeah. the, the month and the year. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. they're I pretty. Don't know uh, that. Man, they're I, pretty exact. I, mean, I know when I got. I know. I know when I got <laughs> arrested last time. I think the last time I got arrested. Yeah, yeah. I I remember the I remember the year. <laughs> and probably I could probably make a pretty close guess at the month but like that's uh, it yeah. that's, that's, no, that's the best that's fine. Out of me. they're not going to ask for like the day it's going to be like month and year yeah yeah. early 2009 now you have to tell us what you're arrested for uh <laughs> So, okay, this is, I actually enjoy this story because I get to throw my brother under the bus a little bit. So, um, so. Don't, don't lie, you enjoy all your stories. I do enjoy all my stories, but I enjoy them for different reasons. <laughs> and so anyway, so, uh, so in 2008, shortly before I moved out of Ohio, I got a new vehicle, and I transferred my plates. And in Ohio, you can use, if you're not getting new plates, you can use your plates as temporary plates during the transfer process. And so I was doing that. I was using the plates from my old car as temporary plates on my new car, which was 100% legal, and that's the way that it's done there. And so, um, but in PA, it's not. In PA, you cannot do that. Um, so, but there's also, like, not a transfer process. You just go and sit in an old lady's front room and pay her a dollar and, and you're done. But anyway, so, um, so I was working as a pizza delivery driver in PA. I was living in Ohio, just across the state line. Uh, I was driving on delivery. I got pulled over for driving on the wrong plates, that the plates that I was on weren't registered to that vehicle. And I explained... These are temporary plates. But the officer was really, like, concerned because the paperwork that I needed to have, 
the registration paperwork or whatever that I needed to have to prove that this was all legal, I had just gotten like that day and it had been delivered when I left, like right after I left for work. And so it was sitting at my house, at my apartment over in Ohio. And so he pulls me over and he asks for my registration and I'm like, funny story, I don't have it. It's sitting in my apartment in Ohio. And so I had to like send a friend to go get it and bring it to me as the officer is all pissy already. And so he goes ahead and gives me a ticket for driving on this. And I was like, no, seriously, it's legal. Like, here's the registration. Here's like the rule. But he gave me a ticket for it. So I end up going to court to fight it because it's garbage. It's a trumped up charge. I was following the law. So I go to court and I show the judge. I'm like, see here. Here is the law. I have highlighted the relevant section. It says that this is the way that you transfer plates. And he goes, yes, but this section says if you're getting new plates, you have to do this. And I was like, yes, but I'm not getting new plates. And he says, but this section says if you're getting new plates, you have to do this. Therefore, you had to do this. And I was like, no, I didn't. I was transferring plates, which is this other section. And he gave me the fine anyway. And I was furious. So I get this stupid fine, and I tell them, okay, I'll pay it piecemeal. So I'm paying, I'm, do, I'm paying it in payments because it was more than I had on hand. And I moved to Massachusetts partway through this process. And a check that I get, send them bounces. And I don't know that it bounced because I'm in Massachusetts and I'm not tracking my bank very well. So I get a bench warrant out for my arrest for this fine that shouldn't have existed in the first place. Some months pass. I end up, my brother moves back to PA, me and our roommate move, go down to visit him at one point. We go down, we're hanging out with him, we go out to Denny's, middle of the night, day I just arrived. We go out to Denny's, afterwards Chris is like, hey, let's drive around, let's like actually cruise around a little bit before we go back to the house. I was like, I don't know, man, this, is, this seems like a bad idea. Like... We're all tired. We've been driving all day. But he's like, eh, it'd be fine. So we go over to Sharpsville, which is like one of the nice towns in that area. And we're driving through a decently nice part of Sharpsville. And a police officer starts following us because we're literally the only car on the road. Like, there's, there's no one else out at this time. And Chris then decides to inform us that he's actually not sure if his license is valid right now. And we're like, wait, hold up, what? And he tells us his license might have gotten suspended in New York, but he's not sure. And we're like, why are you driving? Like, why are you, why are you driving? And if you're driving, why are you insisting on us doing more unnecessary driving like this was all your idea and now you're telling us that you weren't actually allowed to be doing any of it so we're mad we're like okay if we get pulled over like they're gonna just arrest chris or something because he's driving on a suspended license and then i'm gonna have to drive us home because the other person in the car couldn't drive stick so he wouldn't be able to drive the car so we get pulled over. Well, Chris decides, okay, I'm just going to fake him out. I'm going to pull over. I'm going to turn the car off. I'm going to look like we've arrived at our destination. And I'm like, this is a terrible idea. Listen, the town line is literally like eight blocks that way. Just go. Just get out of Sharpsville. He's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Pulls over, turns off the car. The cop goes by. What we don't know is that the cop goes up, pulls into an alley, and just kind of twiddling around through the back alleys. And so Chris waits a couple minutes, turns the truck and car back on, and starts driving. And so this officer is coming back out of the alleys and sees us coming. Is like, that's weird. Those people just pulled over at this person's house, like they reached their destination. I'm now suspicious and runs the plates and finds out that the person who owns the, those plates has a suspended license. So he pulls us over and checks all of our licenses because it was suspicious. He can't do that though. I well, whether or not he's legally allowed to doesn't really change the fact that he did. So, <laughs> which is a known problem with cops. Anyway, so, so he pulls us over. He pulls us over. He checks everyone's IDs in the car because he's suspicious. That's, yeah, that's a violation of your Fourth Amendment. Uh -huh. and, uh, and in doing so, learns that there's a bench warrant out for my arrest. So I get arrested. Chris gets a warning. He's driving on Ben Lessons. He gets a warning. So technically, you could have sued 
the police department for forcing themselves. Unless is Ohio uh, this is PA. a stop and identify, or is Pennsylvania a stop and identify state? I don't know. I don't believe it is. I don't know what that means. I don't know what a stop and identify state is. So a stop and identify state is you have to show <coughs> your ID to a cop if they ask you regardless of if there's a uh, reasonable articulable suspicion but the no mere PA is not one Ohio okay. is incidentally the, the PA so is the not mere one. fact that it was a traffic stop there's um I think it's called the 1985 that that officer like um he violated your 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 fourth amendment rights because he cannot force them and you could technically you could technically um you could still technically sue them for for um forcing you to identify or is it like a 1980 or something like that i think oh, that's <coughs> fascinating information though i didn't know that hmm but yeah, so I got arrested on a bench warrant, and the yeah. only person that has to identify in a traffic stop is the is the motor vehicle operator, because re, like his suspicion of you is not reasonably articulable because he does not know that you were actually in in the process of committing a crime. Right. But the only crime that he he could pin is on your brother. For driving with a suspended license. Okay. Well. Well, at any rate, so I got arrested on a bench warrant, and uh, Chris got a warning and wasn't allowed to drive away from the scene. So he wasn't allowed to drive the car. I was now on my way to the police department in Farrell, two towns over. Well, three, if you count the... Cause, anyway, so, um, so I was on my way to the police department in Farrell over this whole thing, and the only person left in the car who was allowed to drive it didn't know how to drive stick. So he had to, like, Chris had to just talk him through driving stick all the way to the Farrell police department to pick me up. I had to pay my fine, and then I could get in the car and drive us home. I've heard that story so many times. Yeah. <clears throat> and you will hear it again. I'm sure. This this was the this was part of the for better or for worse part of our <laughs> <laughs> You will you will hear my stories far too many times for them to still be entertaining. It's true. Till We're gonna be one of those families part. where the where the kids like finish the story for you. Yeah, but I refuse to be one of those people who only has like five stories, though. So that helps. No, you have hundreds. I have hundreds. See, that's that you breadth. Tell... Breadth is important here. Right, but <laughs> we still hear them all, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's true I use them as sermon illustrations too because yeah. this is how I function yeah oh, I can say that I've never been arrested mm. although my last my last ticket I probably should have been because I was going way over the speed limit and doing a lot of things and I was actually fortunate that that's all the cop gave me was a ticket <laughs> <clears throat> ouch and my coworkers like, you're going to pay that fine? I'm like, yeah, because I totally was guilty. I'm not going to try to fight it. <laughs> and it only ended up being like a $350 uh, ticket, too. So it was, a, it was I, I was expecting a lot worse. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I had right. never gotten a ticket for more than $85, and that was his fault. That's true. It was my fault. How help. is it his fault? Because you, if because... you were operating the vehicle, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, my car was perfectly legal. Okay, <laughs> I 
I was fine driving my car to work every day until on my way home from work, I had a blowout and we didn't have enough money to replace the tire. So the next day I had to take his car to work. Mm -hmm. Oh his car no. That he'd been driving on a failed rejection sticker for nine months. Oof. Nine months. The first time I drive it to work, I get pulled over. <laughs> I had never been pulled over in my life the first time I drive his car that he's been driving on for nine months. <laughs> you know, a I rejection sticker over. is only good for 30 days. So I didn't know a rejection yeah. sticker existed is what's is what's funny about that. You have 30 days to get it fixed and reinspected. Well, I know that now, but I didn't at the time. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't just a rejection sticker. It was a red rejection sticker. They're all red. No, they're not. No, there's no. black ones. There's a black one oh, and there's really? a red one. A red one, you're not allowed to drive. Yeah, so a black one um, is, it's not a safety concern, but it is something that needs to be addressed. <laughs> I did not know that. Yep. We've so I got pulled gotten over. gotten red ones. I got pulled over on my way to work, and I told them, this is my husband's car, and they let me off. And then I got pulled over again on my way back from work and I told them this is my husband's car and I got an $85 ticket mm -hmm. for driving on a rejection sticker. Mm -hmm. They could have towed me, but they didn't. Yeah. I was so mad. Yeah, she was. She was furious. She goes, she gets home. She's, she's like, are you, are you kidding, kidding me? me? Like, like what? what, what is going on with this? Why is, how long has that rejection sticker been on there? And I was like, what, how long has what been on there? Because I literally, I did not know that a rejection sticker was a thing that existed. I had no uh, idea. So, where did you get it inspected? They're supposed to go over your inspection when you fail. Well, they did. Yeah. So, okay. So, here's what I was... <laughs> all right. So, so as I understand it in PA, and I, I, don't, I didn't actually have experience with this because I, I always went to a lick and stick in place and got a, a shady inspection sticker. Um, but as I understand the actual legal process in PA, where I grew up and had to take all my driving tests and everything, uh, you would go in, and if it failed the inspection, they didn't put a sticker on it, and they didn't give it back to you. So, if you failed the inspection, they would come out and they would say, you know, hey, uh, this needs, to, needs repaired, like, right now. And so you could get it repaired there, or you could get it towed to a different shop and have it repaired there, but you were not driving it. You were not going to touch those keys until it got a valid sticker on it. You were not allowed to. So, if it passed, they would come out and they'd say, okay, here's your keys, here's the report, here's a couple things that you need to know about. And those would usually be things where, like, it's not, it doesn't fail right now, but it will fail if this is still true next year. Like, this is, the, it's going to get worse. So, when the guy comes out and goes, here's your keys, here's your report, here's some things you need to know, I said, all right, thank you, and I left. Because he gave me my car back. Was this the truck? No, wait. No, it was no. a Taurus. Yeah, it was a Taurus. Wait, are you, are you talking about my uh, my F one fifty? No, the, yeah. Was this a truck that Carol was driving, or the? No, it was, was a Taurus. Okay, it was a four Taurus. Yeah. No, my, my F one fifty. I definitely got a shady back room lick 'em stick 'em. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those watching, you can, you can't do that in Massachusetts because all of the all of the um, safety inspections now are actually recorded, and those recordings yeah. are audited by the state. Yeah. And yeah. Because um, it was a problem. Because you could do that for a long time, and yeah, it was a problem. And I did in Massachusetts. It was in two thousand and nine, two thousand ten. Must have been two thousand ten. That's when I got my F one fifty. It took yeah, some I doing. You... I had to know a guy who knew a guy, and we had to like go to an actual shop, and like there was a whole process to it to to pull it off. But we did. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it was so much more difficult than it was back back home. Like, back home, I would just go to this guy 
who's now out of business because he retired. He was old. Um, I would just go to this guy's shop, and we would sit there, and we would just chat about the Steelers, how the Steelers season was going, for like a half hour. And then he'd ask, like, hey, are your brakes, you know, bonded or bolted? And you would answer him, and he would write that down. And then he would go in and be like, turn your headlights on. You'd turn the headlights on, and he would see that they work, and then he would just put a sticker on and send you home. And that was my that was my experience getting getting stickers for my the entirety of my time living in PA. Yeah, I think in Massachusetts now, if <laughs> if the if you're caught doing that, they revoke your um your license to actually conduct state um, inspections, and yep. those machines are ridiculously expensive. They're yeah. like a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and you make like the the shops they make next to nothing yeah well i'm not doing the inspections so i'm not gonna tell you who did the inspection but uh, (laughs) but that was it after that after after that and after you know god sorted me out of it i've i've been better about the government and i have all of my inspections have been legal and up up on, on the up and up uh, I just didn't know what that meant the first time that it happened. Because it was literally, it was the first inspection I got that was legitimate in my life. Was the one where I got the red sticker. And I was just like, "Yep, okay. And just went about my business. And had no idea. And yep. I, did, I did have one person try to tell me that there was something wrong with what I was doing. And it was, because I was going to Greenfield Community College... And so the, the like campus police gave me a ticket. And I went to them. I was like, I was parked legally. Like, why are you giving me a, a parking ticket? They're like, it's not a parking ticket. It's a problem with your inspection. I was like, I'm sorry, is that your jurisdiction? They're like, well, no. I was like, then I'm not paying you a fine for it. And walked out. And that was it. I didn't, I didn't actually know what the problem with my inspection was. I didn't let them tell me. And uh, and they dropped the f- fine because they didn't have jurisdiction over that, <laughs> and so it was just it just never came up again. And so that was the one. And Carol had no idea because she she was driving her car. She wasn't looking at my sticker. Yep. Um, so that was it. No one no one else knew or thought to tell me, hey, you know, there's a red R on your car. Do you know what that means? So I just <laughs> nine months. Thinking I was driving an illegal <laughs> sticker. That's oh. actually not the worst I've done. I, I drove on an expired back in PA. I drove on an expired sticker for eleven months before I got pulled over once. But yeah, I'll tell you that my registration on my Explorer is overdue by two years. I haven't. <laughs> that's been sitting in my driveway for for two years. Yeah, haven't wow. touched it. Yeah, there isn't a registration on my F-150 right now. Yeah, I just need to cancel the registration and sell the car. Yeah, I need to get rid of it. I I tried to get I tried to sell it to a junkyard over the weekend, uh, or last on like Friday. I tried to sell it to a junkyard on Friday, but they didn't. Their their tow truck was broken down, so they would have to go to it through a ex, exterior towing company and. Would, it, this would cut into how much money I would get out of the truck. And they weren't actually sure if that company could come to our town anyway. Where was the junkyard? It's, uh... It, it's airplane. It's airport auto over there on uh, whatever it is. It's over by the Fitch airport, airport Road. Airport. Yeah, it's over an airport road over by the Fitch <laughs> Airport. I don't know okay. if the... I don't know if the shop itself is officially in Fitchburg or Lemonster. But it's over that about that way. I mean, I could AAA it over there. I was you can't about that. AAA without a registration. Yeah, so that's the thing. I, I pitched that idea because we have AAA, and so I was like, oh, really? maybe I can just AAA it, AAA it over there because I I get like fifty more bucks if I can bring it in. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I I told I told Carol I was like maybe I can get AAA to to tow it in. She was like it's not registered. You can't do that. I mean. Yeah, my car's not registered either, so I guess I can't AAA mine either. <laughs> nope. We learned that. We learned cars that for kids, cannot. it man. <laughs> Donate it. They'll take anything. Yeah. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I don't yeah. think they'll take this. I just need to get rid of it. Well, because they use they they don't like fix it and sell it. They just 
get the scrap. They auction it. Yeah. They, oh, whatever they do with it. Auction yeah, they auction. Yeah, it. but they're so, not going to be able to auction that. Like it's. They'll it auction has, anything. Like, it has literal <laughs> rust through the floorboard. No, it like, doesn't. The floorboard doesn't have rust. The floorboard just isn't attached properly. I thought you were giving it to Grizz. Yeah, I was, and then he uh, decided that driving a truck was too stressful. Because it's too big. Okay. <clears throat> Does he want to explore? <laughs> I mean, he probably would, but he needs to get his license first. That's true. I mean, all it needs brakes, or no, brake lines. That's the thing that I have to get done on it. Yeah. He has the means to get the work done on it. I know. And on well, the truck. Sort of. Yeah, sort of. Talk to me offline. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll strike a deal. Yeah, we'll get together sometime. You can bring over the sander, and we can talk about it while I'm purging some cast iron. <laughs> cast iron. Um... So I bought my my current car in February, and my inspection sticker is now due in July because I kind of let it lapse usually about a month before I get around to inspecting it, <laughs> getting it reinspected. But um, the pandemic helped out with that because oh, yeah. I didn't have to get it. I got like a three month extension on inspection because of the pandemic. Yeah, last we got year. We, we took advantage of that too. Cause I think one of our vehicles need needed some repairs, and so we were able to actually get it done before we went to get it inspected because of that. So that was handy. That was cool. We were big fans of that. But yeah. Um, but no, yes, for those of you watching who, uh, like to think that I'm a good moral person because I preach on Sundays occasionally, um, I, I, I do try to follow the law better now than I used to. These are old stories. Oof, apparently there's a situation going on with a kid. Sorry. It's okay. So we do I'm not, not in ministry, so I can be a I can be a, yeah. as big of a jerk as I want to be. Hooligan. <laughs> we do we do not we do not officially condone driving on expired stickers or or red or fudging your registration or, or your fudging your registration or whatever it is. Inspection. Um, these are just these are things that have happened. <laughs> Everyone's got a past. Everyone's got a past. Yep, I got to get my uh, car inspected this by before the end of the month. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we just got Come. we just got Carol's inspected. Yep. How do the registrations work inspection. here? Is it like the same time, the same month as your birthday or something? No, it's um no, that's... based on your license plate. Right. The last number is the month that your registrations do? Oh. So, um I think vanity plates are November. So it's going to be it's going to be 1 through 10, 1 through 0, so 0 is going to be October. And then I believe that vanity plates are in November. I don't believe that there are any registrations due in December. Huh. So based on the last digit well, of your uh, maybe of your corporate. license plate, maybe oh maybe, doing, uh, but that. um, yeah, maybe commercial. But based on the last number of your license plate is when your registration is due for renewal, hmm. on the even on um, even years. So if you buy on a on an odd year, your registration is only good for one year, and then you have to renew it the next year. Oh, which is stupid, frustrating. And if you let your registration lapse, they actually prorate your, they take off, a, you know, a twelfth of the registration, re-registration fee per month that you're late. Huh. <laughs> Man. 
I've done that a couple of times by accident. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my registration is is not up. I'm like, why am I only paying like fifty seven dollars or something to re-register this when it's supposed to be like sixty or whatever it is? Mm. I was like, huh, good to know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had to deal with PA or Ohio registrations, so I don't entirely remember how they worked. But I know that it was just, it was by when you bought it, and that was it. Like, even if you were transferring plates, the registration was set by when you bought this this particular vehicle. The registration went with the vehicle, not with the plate. Yeah. So generally, yeah, your your inspection is going to be due the month that you bought the the month that you bought your vehicle or within one month of that because you get the two weeks so if you bought it at the end of of march then you have until the beginning of april to yeah. to get it um inspected yeah and then ohio didn't have inspections so you could just do whatever you wanted they didn't even have like an in- so the insurance, as I recall, the insurance requirement in Ohio was um, you had to have means to pay. And so it was if, if you had some something in place that would presumably enable you to pay for damages to someone else's car, you were fine. And so it could be insurance. It could be whatever. A lot of people were just like, I have a job that's means to pay. And they'd, they'd be like, all right, whatever. And that was it. Like, that was the end of it. Like, it was, in practice, it was assumed, in my experience anyway, um, in practice it was assumed that if you had means to pay for gas, then you had means to pay for a repair. And so, functionally, if you were driving, you were illegal. <laughs> So, like, states like Ohio are the reason why our insurance rates are so high than the rest of the country? Uh, well, that's that's why the country average is low, yes. Um, because, like, in, in PA and, you know, Massachusetts and stuff like that, they can really rake you over the coals for for their prices because you have to have it. Like, you, mm-hmm. you just have to pay what they're charging because if you don't, then screw you. Uh, but in Ohio, like if they charge too much, you just won't buy it, and that's that. So they have to keep the prices low. So yeah, states like Ohio are why the national average is as low as it is. But obviously, they're not why it's so expensive here, because we're subsidizing them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, but they didn't have inspections either, and so like you'd have you'd have cars that were just like falling apart. Like I, I, I think I knew a guy who was driving around who didn't. I think he had a piece of cardboard in place of a door just to make sure that the rain didn't get in. And like that was it. It didn't matter. No one cared. <laughs> wow, well, we got a lot of viewers tonight. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> no, I'm not even watching that. <laughs> so if you guys want us to discuss something, um, feel free to type it in chat. <laughs> um, non-controversial topics, please. I mean, you can submit controversial topics, but we're not going to have a debate show. Yeah, we won't. That is not the point here. Yep. We love uh, chat participation, too. Yeah, if you guys have any input on any of this stuff. Officially, the last topic we rolled was most confusing game storyline or franchise storyline. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Do we have any other topics? Yep, Did I just rolled, I just rolled topics? a 13, mm. which was... Um, genres reflecting reality is what I wrote. Um, what does that even mean? And the tag under us says art imitating life. So, um, I think I, I, I think that I wrote it 
around the time that we were, uh, I was doing that horror panel at Book Fiend Readers Fest, and we were talking about how the horror genre tends to reflect, um, the kind of the social fears of the time in which they're made. And sci-fi tends to reflect, like, hopes and things like that. And so I think that was kind of the, the general idea of putting that in there. But I don't remember if... I don't remember how I was going to make that a specific topic. Because that was so over I will ago. disagree with part of your statement for, about the sci-fi... Yeah, the horror I was think, the one we were actually talking about. Um, I think that sci-fi represents either... It represents the extremes of hope and failure of society. Hmm. I, I'd say go that far because you, you, you do see a lot of dystopian like science so fiction. Is dystopia its own genre or is it a science fiction? So dystopia is... Um, like half a genre. <clears throat> hmm. So, not every dystopia is sci-fi. You can have dystopian Correct. sci-fi. Yep. As you can have dystopian, right. but it's always an adjective. It's it's dystopian something. Hmm. Yeah. It's a it's a genre adjective rather than a genre itself. Okay. But those are usually the the two extremes. Um. It's. I would say it, I don't see it all that often where it's just kind of like, hey, this is like normal life in the future. It's usually one extreme or the other. Right. Yeah. Although sometimes it is like her. Her was pretty much normal life in the future. Okay, I, I haven't actually watched that. Or is it called her, or is it called? She? It's yeah, called it was her. her. Yeah, with, it's with, called uh, her. Joaquin and it's Phoenix. a yeah. really, really weird movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't but know if I would, I would say... call it normal life in the future. I though. mean, it's it's a slice of life story. It's this dude just kind of going about his life. Like in the society, there isn't really commentary on the society that creates the situation or any of that stuff as much as just kind of the science fiction is the setting okay. for this character's life story. Yeah, I would I would say that the, the science fiction is more the device of, of the story. Like, I, I, I know what the movie's about. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the mechanism that they use to to have the story about human nature to bring that about because hers like an AI or a robot, correct? Yeah, yeah. Where he yeah. falls in love with his phone. Yeah, Scarlett yeah. Johansson, okay, yeah, yeah. I think, is the voice of of the character, and and so her character is is an AI, and then he like falls in love with her, and like yeah, okay, it raises questions about whether or not she can fall in love with him. Yep, and right. and then kind of and and then raises questions about some of the like. Thing, the interactions that she has with other AIs and things like that, and so it's 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 really it's really interesting. But like the plot line isn't it isn't it is clearly sci-fi in that you know you have the AI and it's set in the future. Yeah, all but the are. science fiction is the it's is, just a vehicle for a love story. Yeah, is is the device <clears throat> on the character on the character study of human nature. I guess it's a stretch to call it a love story, but it is. It is. Yeah. It's it's just a vehicle for the yeah, story yeah. that they're trying to tell. It's not. Yeah. But no, I don't. I wouldn't say that it's just a vehicle for the story because you wouldn't get that story outside of AI being something that exists. Well, I mean, because it's it's not just like any old love story. Like it explores the humanity of a re like if you can actually create a real ai it explores that yeah i, I get that a but... human like there are definitely sci-fi questions that are being asked and answered by this movie yeah i mean that's true but i think that the heart of the story though is about his 
views towards her as an object of his affection. And so I, 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 I took it as the heart yeah. of the movie was was very much about, like, <clears throat> at, at certain points, almost his sense of entitlement over her and stuff like that, right. which is definitely a, a story that we can tell without AI. So, um, yeah, I was going to say that you could have a similar type of type of storyline where instead of having like an AI, it could be just an inanimate object. And then the, the relationship is based off of the psychosis of like the, the, the main character. I think Lars and, then, and the real then girl does a, some of that actually. I think so. Yeah. And then it would be more of a psychological study um, with those human nature notes. Yeah, but, like, there's a whole part of that movie where, like, like the, the AI in this movie is essentially, like, Siri, yeah. but, mm-hmm. an AI, like, an actual AI. And so there's a whole, they explore this whole idea of, like, this is one AI that's interacting with billions of people in the same way, all at the same time. And him grappling with the fact that she has a whole life mm-hmm. that he doesn't see outside of the relationship that they've created. And I don't think you could get that well, without, I, think, I mean, that is like, I think that that is a very universal, like that, that he's struggling with the idea that she exists beyond him as part of that entitlement that you see in a lot of really unhealthy relationships. Hmm. And I, I took it as though that was the heart of the movie is is his inability like even when even at like the fact that he's falling in love with her and the way he does so prevents him from viewing her as a p- full person even though you know just treating her as an AI he would have actually been treating her as a full person more than he was as an object of his affection and that the heart of the movie was about this this kind of mindset that he was taking into it that produced that effect Hmm. and that produced that effect in, in very real relationships as well But I mean that was that was what I saw in it. But I mean it, it it apparently wasn't. I don't know if that was what they intended for us to see in it. You know. Probably, it seems valid. <clears throat> but I mean, you never know because I mean some, sometimes it's they're making something that they think is like an actual love story, and then everyone else watching is like, uh, whoa, hold up. <laughs> that's true i've seen my share of those oh yeah yeah there's definitely there's definitely a place for that in the market <laughs> so i don't know i don't know i haven't read any interviews i don't have any uh you know word of god input on that <laughs> so, i yeah. forgot that that movie existed until you mentioned it oh really now, so yeah We've watched a bunch of weird movies, like uh, Melancholia. <laughs> Melancholia, yeah. That was a that was a fun movie. Have you seen that one? No. Have you heard of that, that one? That's with Kirsten Dunst, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm not a Kirsten Dunst fan. I think I avoided it specifically oh, really? because she was in it. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> we only watched it because like it we like, I we went on this whole thing where we were just watching like artsy independent movies for a little while. I I like artsy uh, independent movies. Yeah, sure. but like they were a certain kind of artsy independent movie. Like Melancholia fits into a very niche. I'm pretty sure we watched Melancholia and her like in that same phase. Probably, and we watched what was that other one? Oh man, with the family of weird people. Shoot, I can't remember what it was. It was There's a dystopian. Lots of, lots of movies with families of. Weird I know. <laughs> That, that really doesn't narrow it down. Yeah. No, the it was like a dystopian, like 
future and it was like this really weird family and I can't even remember it was like Dark City or something like that oh I love Dark City Dark City was great hey, no. I, I'm trying to remember if that's what it actually is and we Dark City is not, not about a family though oh yeah that's fair we watched Safety yeah, Not no, Guaranteed around not that time. City. That was a good yeah. one. And Moon? Moon is oh, awesome. Man. Moon that was, was great. Except I was really... Uh, Ryan got really annoyed with me because I, I figured out the plot within like the first five minutes of the movie. Right. And I told her, and she was like, How? <laughs> <laughs> I, did that, I did that with that one... Uh, what was it? Um... Oh, was it? It wasn't called like the missing, was it? The mist? No. No. Oh, the um, with uh, with um, what's her name? Um, forgotten. May that sounds right. The forgotten. Let me look it up and see if that's the one I'm thinking of. With Julianne Moore? Yes. Yeah. So I. Uh... Okay. Yeah. 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 I went and saw that movie in theaters with my then girlfriend, and uh, in the opening credits, I leaned over and was like, "Oh, it's this," and she was like, "Shut up!" And then it was, and she was like, "How? How did you get that?" It was, I completely. It was the opening credits. We didn't even see the story yet. I completely forgot the entire basis of that movie because it was completely unmemorable. I know I've seen it. <laughs> which I know, is, I think which I've is seen fun, it. given the premise I of the I think movie. I've seen it a couple times, too. Oh, no, I only saw it the once, yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's alright. So I probably shouldn't say what it is, then. Do you remember who was in that movie that you're trying to think of, Carol? No. No. I feel like... I don't know or why Dark plot? City is, like... All I remember is that it was dystopian and there's this one scene that like will pop into my head every so often and it makes me want to throw up. What scene? Uh, well, it's like toward the end of the movie uh -huh. and one guy like dies and he falls forward and there's like drool coming out of his mouth and it, I like <laughs> I don't know why but every so often like I'll remember that and I'm just like Whoa. and yeah, I need to not <laughs> Um, but there was a little girl in it, and there was like a group of people that were trying to get her or something. Oh man, I wish I could remember. Um, yeah, I can't go off of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking at a list of. A Wikipedia list of dystopian movies right now. Mm. Uh, oh, Serenity is listed as a, as a dystopian. Well, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Also on my Plex. I think I've I think I've told people that I own Serenity on every format except for VHS. Mm -hmm. So if anyone finds a VHS copy of Serenity, let me know. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't City of Ember, was it? Hmm. No, but I have seen that one. Yeah, I know we watched that one. That's why they're asking. That one's a good one. Yeah, Dark Metropolis. Oh, what was that weird one with the the twin planets? The what? Oh, there was the one that we oh, watched yeah. that had twin planets. Yeah, and they were so the cities were right above each other. Yeah. Yeah. I. I don't remember, but I I know <laughs> what you're talking. Hold about. Hold on, I know which one there that you're talking about. Um. It was like a super cheesy romance. 
Was that upside down? It might have been. Oh, yeah, that was another Chris Kirsten Dunst movie. That's why I didn't see that one either. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a terrible actress. Oh. I. Yeah, I don't have. I don't really have any problem with her. Um, yeah, that was definitely. Upside Down is definitely that one. Okay. Like dystopian movies like Brazil. Brazil? Um, yes. I've never Terry, heard of uh, Terry Gilliam. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Price was in it. Uh, Al Pacino was in it. Or not Al Pacino. Um, was it Al Pacino? Uh, not Al Pacino. Um, the other... Uh, sorry. Oh. Not... Um, this got made. Robert De Niro was in it. Hmm. It's also on my Plex, so watch it sometime. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay. It's a great movie. Um, I just found a movie called 2081 that was released in 2009 based on the uh, Kurt Vonnegut story Harrison Bergeron, which is one of only two stories that I remember reading in <clears throat> elementary school, and I love that story. Hmm. Uh, but Army Hammer's in it. <laughs> Army Hammer is, is in it, yeah. He is, in uh, fact, Harrison Bergeron. Yeah. But Patricia Clarkson's in it. I don't remember who that like is. Her. Oh, okay. I also don't really remember who Army Hammer is. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. she, was, she was the wife of the warden in The Green Mile. <laughs> oh, okay. I've never seen The Green Mile. It's not bad. Uh, it's one of my... It's probably my favorite of the Stephen King books or novellas because it was it was a serial release um, yeah and it's probably my favorite of the of his movie adaptations so I my parents had me watch the stand the the miniseries when I was like 12 uh, and it like seriously like ruined me Um and I have never been able to read any Stephen King because of that. I've only ever watched one other Stephen King movie. Um, Which was? The Langoliers. And I really enjoyed oh, that, that was movie. Made, that was made for TV. <laughs> yeah. I I loved that movie. I watched I saw, that over and over and over again. I did see that one. But, uh, but I, I can't read his books. Um. And, like, there's music that I can't listen to anymore because I used to listen to it while I was in the throes of panic attacks because of watching The Stand. So now it's, like, associated with that fear feeling. I so. tried watching the original Stand, and it was just awful. I couldn't. I couldn't. Because I wanted to watch that before watching the, the CBS Stand, the new one that came mm -hmm. out a couple of years ago. And I was just like, nope, I can't do this. I, compl yeah, I completely me. forgot what happened to Stan. I read that in like junior high school. Yeah. Uh, I have never been the same. <laughs> I don't even remember if I watched it. But that's what happens when you read a thousand page book in like three days. I mean, I do that all the time. <laughs> Or at least I used to back before reading. Well, I put used me to, to too, but I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I forgot what happened. Um, we watched Snowpiercer during that. I love Snowpiercer too. I hated that movie. The series. Uh, I watched the first season of the HBO series, and I, I liked it. It was a lot uh, a lot different from from the movie oh really but, yeah i see i liked the movie because like it was just i i thought that it was interesting like the whole class system and, yeah 
I do too. You know, everything. Um, and I thought that it had a very unique premise, something that I hadn't really seen in movies before. City of Lost way. Children. I love City of Lost Children. That's the one I was thinking of. I also on my, on my Plex. So that was one of Ron Perlman's first movies. Um, I think the person who directed City of Your Lost Children also directed um, Amelie, which was um, a French comedy. Mm. Um, because one of the guys, the, the main guy who played like all the different scientists. Yeah. He was the love interest in, in Amelie as well. Um, City of Lost Children is one of the, the, the rare movies that critics say is a perfect movie. Like, um, if you watch it, there are like not, there are no continuity, um, errors within between shots and stuff. Mm. So it, that is one of my favorite movies. It was really good. I don't remember. Oh, really? Yeah. Go back and watch it. It's on my Plex. Yeah, we'll have to watch it again. It was pretty good. I was so psyched when they um, when they released <clears throat> that on uh, on Blu-ray because mm. I was I really wanted a better copy because I I think I had it on on uh, on DVD, but I was like, this is one of my favorite movies. I need to have it. Um, But um, another, like, if you like pretty movies, this is going away from, um, this is going away from, like, uh, science fiction, but you need to watch uh, the movie The Fall. Uh, Lee Pace is in it. So, um... This was when he back like right after he was doing uh, pushing daisies, um, and before he he did uh, he was Ronin, the Conqueror, and uh, Guardians of the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't know that he was that guy. Yes. Um. Visually, stunning movie. Huh. I do like visually stunning movies. You do, yeah. Oh, so man. I would I would highly recommend that. Unfortunately, I do not own that movie. That's all right. I'm sure I can find it. I might actually own it, but I don't think I own it. Like, um, I think I only own it on um, DVD. Mm. Like one one movie that I absolutely love, and I I never would have watched it if because uh, I I don't normally do like period anything, let alone period romance. Uh, but um, Anna Karenina, the version of Aaron, that was Anna, so good. The version of Anna Karenina we watched was, I mean, the filmography was amazing. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that one? I don't know if like it's the one with uh oh who's Kira Knightley? That? Yeah, Kira Knightley, the the Kira Knightley one. Um. No, I haven't watched it. Okay. Um, the whole Kira Knightley and Jude Law are the, are kind of, mm-hmm. and the whole thing. It's filmed like the way they do it, it. It obviously it isn't actually done this way, but how it's presented is that it's all being done within one theater, and so you have okay. like. You have them like moving sets aside, and the camera is moving deeper into the stage, or to move out into the audience. Or there's a scene where like someone is there's like a ball happening, so people are dancing on the stage with with that that's set up as the ballroom. And this character okay. who is kind of having a um, there's a character who's having kind of a monologue about it is in the catwalk over the stage. Okay. And so it's like huh. they they really play with the the idea that this is a theater show, um, even though it's very much not really presented as one. And I loved the way they did it. Like it was just yeah. There's a lot of like 
just beautiful camera movement that that just I, like it accentuates what's happening in the scene. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Huh. It's I'll not even to... a great story, but that like the way they filmed yeah. it is just amazing. Yeah, I don't even remember most of the story, but that <laughs> visually, like that stuck with me. So I don't watch a lot of like serious romance job like drama type movies yeah, i boy. will watch like rom-coms every once in a while like i'll watch the really bad rom-coms just because i want to be entertained <laughs> but like it's it's kind of funny because like i i tend to stay away from a lot of comedy movies because i just don't find them all that funny um i i like satire movies or like you know the the movies that are making fun of things but I don't typically watch like a lot of like the you know the what I would consider the slapstick comedies, mm. and um, it's kind of like up there with like horror movies for me. I tend to not watch horror movies, especially like the '80s style movies, because I'm like I've I've always said if I want to watch a bunch of dumb people, I'll just look out. I'll just watch people in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, so. I don't tend to get into horror, which is so which because is good, I can't watch horror. The because it's funny because so Tall Tales is I'm, I've been informed horror, or at least parts of it are, and significant parts of it, and uh, and so when I was started writing it, I was just writing like with the mindset of I'm writing urban fantasy that has these kind of that like works in this way like here's how the story works and here's some of the things that happen and then people started like an early review I got of it of kind of the story as I was developing was someone said oh I love like there's this sense of dread that's just pervasive that just kind of hangs over the whole story and, and really gives it this really great dark feel and I was like what? <laughs> I didn't know that that was there. <laughs> and then, like, I started... And so uh, a number of people, um, including Carol, um, point out, like, at some point or another, like, this bit sounds like horror. Like, this sounds like horror. And so I went to... I, I started getting some input from other people. I was just like, listen, can you look at this story and tell me, like, is this urban fantasy with horror elements? Like, are there horror elements? Should I be warning people that there are horror elements? And the response that I got back in general was, no, this this is horror. Like that's, that's what genre this is, and, and so I had to like learn why it was horror, and then learn how to work with it being horror. Uh, but the reason I had no idea of that is probably because I don't watch horror and I don't read horror, and so I didn't have like the exposure to the genre to where I could just be like, oh yeah, I do see what I see. I see the horror in this, and it didn't scare me. So I, it didn't occur to me that there was that fear was a thing that was being encouraged by the text. But now that I understand it, I think I'm doing. <laughs> now that I understand it, that's what I'm doing with it. I, I think I've done. Now you can do it on purpose. Yeah, now I can do it on purpose. Now I'm actually <laughs> doing a better job of it. I think. But obviously, people are welcome to read Tall Tales and, and tell me if um, you've noticed an improvement. But yeah. Speaking of Tall Tales, who won your contest? Uh, so there were two people who won initially. Um, and I, I emailed them and so there. Okay, so there was gonna be five con five winners total. Two grand prize winners who were getting Volume 1, Volume 2, The Blind Guide's Purgatory, and a promised copy of Volume 3. So as soon as Volume 3 is ready, I'll send it to them. Um, but obviously they weren't going to receive it right away because it's not done yet. Uh, and then three other people who are just going to get Volume 1. And I, I drew the five names. I contacted all five of them. I said, hey... I need an address. Please confirm that, you know, please confirm your win. 
by giving me your address, an address that I can send these to. Like, I didn't care if it was a P.O. box or a friend's or whatever. Like, I, I don't care what address it's going to. Just give me an address to send it to as confirmation of your entry, basically. Um, and I gave them a week to do that. And one of the grand prize winners did not get back to me. And so I ended up having to draw a different one. Um, so they end up being... Uh, Someone named uh, Melody was one. I'm not going to give out last names right now. Yep, but, that's uh, cool. Mel there was a... Uh, let me pull it up here real quick. Because I, I have this stuff saved so that I can... Uh, Deborah. Deborah in okay. Florida and Melody in British Columbia. Very cool. Won well, the, congratulations. Won the grand prizes. Congratulations to the grand prize winners then. Yeah. And hopefully Deborah's feeling better because she she contacted me and, and said they showed up right when I tested positive for COVID, so now I have something to do during <laughs> during lockdown. So hopefully she's feeling better. But yeah. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. And obviously, like I said, I, I'll be sending out Volume 3 as soon as it's ready. And I'm hoping that by the time Salem Paracon comes around in November, that I'll be able to have... I'll have enough of Volume 3 done that I'll be able to say with certainty, here's when it'll be released. And either take pre-orders... Or something like that. Like, I don't know if I'm going to take pre-orders or I'm going to have a, a different system where people can kind of get a pre-order price when it comes out or, or whatever. I kind of feel weird doing pre-orders at a con. Because, like, they don't know if they're going to... Yeah. If they're really going to get it. You know what I mean? They're paying me for a thing that, that they know it doesn't... Do. You know, like, you pre-order from a, a, a major publisher or something... You know the book is coming. Um, you pre-order from a booth at a convention, and you don't know. You don't know if they're just going to run off with your money. Yeah, you have right. no idea. And so, so like I, I'm considering doing a thing instead where, because um, at the conventions I take twenty percent off, is is kind of what we're doing now. Uh, the price is on my website. 20, not 20% 20 off the price on Amazon, which is actually higher um, than my website. The 20% the off the price on my website. So the volumes end up being 12 bucks instead of 15 on my website or 16.99 on Amazon. Yep. Um, and so what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is you sign up for you sign up to be in, to be informed when volume three is released or whatever or give out a coupon or something like that so that if you order volume three as soon as it's released basically you get con price on it um and just kind of to have it in people's heads that like oh i have this thing that's good for you know this discount as soon as this book comes out on this date you know yep I think that's. I think that's more. I think it's easier. For, I think it'll be easier to ask people to trust that than to ask them to. Yeah, because it doesn't give them. It doesn't make them obligated to hand over money at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that you're not trustworthy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I, 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 I am, but I will. I will keep my word as as I do. But like. Yep. But they yeah, don't know that. They don't know that. Yeah. They don't yeah. know me. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm. That's what I'm saying is I know that you're trustworthy. And I have to, like I, I, I wouldn't consideration that. Yeah. I wouldn't they trust know, trust a rando <laughs> at a uh, at a con either. Yeah. Say mm -hmm. like, hey, if you give us money, you know, it's it's like you know, those those Kickstarters that have yeah. scammed people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I mean like if it was like if I was doing this at like Book Fiend Readers Fest next year 
or or Paracon next year or something like that. Like a, a thing where I'm established. The bulk of the people there have been there every year and will recognize me and know that I, you know, they've chatted with me. They, we've, you know, we've had, we've we've had a relationship that's building over the course of the multiple years that I've done the event. Maybe I'd be able to pull that off, but this is literally the first Salem Paracon. No yep. one there, like there are people yeah. vendors wise. There pro and there might be a couple guests that drive out from Connecticut. But the bulk of anyone that I'm going to see there who I've ever seen before will be vendors that we saw at Paragon. Mm -hmm. Because they're being put on by the same people. And so, yeah. But the but the actual people coming to the con, they don't know me from Adam. So, and I can't expect them to treat me as though they do. But I am excited. Mm -hmm. Volume 3 is coming. I'm excited for things that are happening in Volume 3. Speaking of um, Kickstarter, uh, yeah. you see, do you guys follow uh, Wormwood at all? No. They make uh, gaming mm -hmm. tables and such. Oh, they're, I've uh, heard of them, in, though. They're based out of uh, Taunton. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yep. Um, I didn't know that. They have a Kickstarter for a Game Master screen. Oh. It looks amazing. I just posted it Oops. in the Pineapple to Topics. Okay. Ooh. Oh. That's pretty. They are super, super sexy, but I don't know if I'm willing to spend like $250 on a yeah. screen that I'll never use. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. where I'm from right now is that like, because I do it so much online, like I just... I don't use my screens anymore, really. Mm -hmm. But I've been watching, I've, I've subscribed to their uh, YouTube channel and like I've been watching them develop this thing for a couple of months now and I'm like, this is pretty awesome. That is cool. Yeah, I like that. It's beautiful. If we, once we get like a actual gaming room setup I want to get like some legit stuff yeah, yeah I want to build a gaming table but it's going to cost a lot of money in wood yeah uh -huh. yeah. I want to build a gaming table once we have like a room I want to build a ga gaming table that will facilitate streaming but will also facilitate in person stuff because like mm -hmm. streaming Ideally, everyone sits fairly far apart, you know, um, so that you can have cameras on each person or whatever. Um, yeah. Or or they sit in, like, groups that are fairly far apart, so you can have cameras on each group. Um, like, for, for just straight streaming production, that's ideal. But for actually playing the game, it's not. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So I'd want to come up with a way to do that. And the problem that I have right now with the in-person game is that my monitors are in the way. I can't see half the table half the time because I'm looking past my monitors to see them. And yeah. so I would want my gaming table to be able to have the screens like down, you know, with the glass where you can where they're at an angle down below the desk, and you can look down through the desk to see them. Well, your monitors are on. Do you have swing arms? No. No. I do. He doesn't. So ideally, what you'd what you do is like if you made a gaming table, you make it so that you can mount your monitors like onto the edge of the table, and then you can lower, and then have them on swing arms so that you can lower them down. But I also need to be able to see them. Yeah. Yes, but you would lower them down so they're like down here as opposed to up here. Oh, so yeah. See, what I was thinking of is very similar to that, but instead it would be on the desk itself. There's glass panels, and the monitors are mounted under the glass. Well, if you were like, so the other thing that you can do is like you can actually mount a TV within the 
within the gameplay area. Right. Mm-hmm. So you you drop that down. You have your you have your your ledge right that you can cover up and then use it as a regular table. No. Just we're, we want to have a gaming room. Yep. But yeah. Yeah, but like at some point you're gonna want some. You you might want to set something on top of it, and you're not gonna want to mm-hmm. have it down on a ledge on top of like plexiglass that's on a, on a you know 55 inch TV as well. So. Yeah, but he'd need like we would need a a monitor for the players to be able to see, and yeah. like a monitor set up for like almost like a DM screen kind of thing so that he can do his... Yeah, and that's why I was saying, like, you, you put those on swing arms, so, like, if you know, if it was in his office or whatever, and you have it open between your your office and his office or whatever, you know, you have, it like, an eight-foot table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that, you know, he mounts his screens to the edge of the table so that they're just yeah. lower so he can actually see over them. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we'll figure it out. I mean, it's also the Eve, that whole idea is somewhat dependent on us having a space that we can devote to the gaming, which is yep. only going to happen one of two ways at this point. Either it happens when Grizz moves out, whenever that is, and we mm-hmm. take over his room and turn it into that. Or we get because we want to buy a larger property and start homesteading and build a house for ourselves on it so if we do that then we can build a space for that and Mm -hmm. and have it part of the plan of what we're building um build a bunch of yurts have a gaming yurt (laughs) we did think about something like that because they you can buy like a one room shed basically uh-huh. it's just like a put up a room finished. anywhere and yeah like a finished room um but uh being external to the rest of the house would be difficult especially because we do a lot of eating while we're gaming yes. <laughs> so and obviously we have the kids to keep an eye on yeah because in the in-person group, um, literally everyone except Alex, who is a child. I mean, she's a teenager, but I'm, I'm about to be 40. I'm allowed to call teenagers children. Um, <laughs> they, uh, like everyone except Alex, who comes, brings kids. So yep. there's yep. a whole bunch of kids that we need to keep an eye on. But yeah, there's, there's. Or you convert your garage. Hmm. You know what? We could convert the garage because we don't use it as a garage anyway. Yeah, but that's partially because it's full of other stuff. That's true. We'd have to Which we'd have to actually find a home for a lot of other stuff that's in there and insulate it because it is not insulated. Yeah. yeah. So come winter, and also summer, that would be a terrible <laughs> place to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the goal right now is land yeah the goal right now is to get land and yep. do the homesteading Ouch. thing more overtly or more consistently or more whatever it is where that's just that's our thing we um well, I'm sure your 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 property value has skyrocketed since you moved in. It has. Oh yes, so much. That's the reason we were able to seriously consider it, honestly, um, because we can now, based on the listed value of our house, if we sold it for just that, and everyone selling for higher than that, mm-hmm. if we sold it for just that, we could with. With between the existing equity, like whatever the the equity that we already had before the price skyrocketed, plus the money that it's listed as now, um, 
we could pay off basically all of our debt and buy some cheap land and just start fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, my property value has risen 66% since I moved in. Oh, wow. So. Yeah, I don't know what the percentage is on ours. The max is probably figured out, but yeah. Hmm. It's a lot, though. It it really is. Yep. And so, yeah. But of course, I can't move any. I can't move anywhere. Can't afford to move anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. It's like if we bought land, like we can. There are plots of land that are like multiple acres, that are coming up on the market. And they're not getting hit with the same thing. They're just they're just not their price isn't inflating the same way. And so there's things but, popping up on the market that we could get multiple acres of workable land for like thirty to eighty thousand. Yeah, but the uh, the price of like construction goods are is still up. Well, so because they're wooded. We can work with the wood that's there, either work that wood or trade it to a lumber yard for, for process lumber. Mm-hmm. So you cut down a tree and trade it to a lumber yard for process lumber. You get the whatever the value of this tree this tree's worth of wood is. You get that much value in wood back from them. And then you just build with that and they process the tree and sell it to somebody else. So that ends up, so there isn't a massive cost attached to that if you have the trees available and if you have a lumber yard you can work with or a way, you know, an on site, like heat, you know, an on site kiln or something. Right. Like if you have, if you have a kiln or a, if you, if you have the kiln and the saw that you need on site, then you can just cut down a tree, process it, and immediately use it as soon as it's processed and ready. Um, and then you don't have to pay, you just have to pay for the, the cost of renting the kiln and saw instead of the price of all the material. Or you just trade it to a lumber yard and, you know, all you paid was the cost of getting the tree down and maybe the cost of transporting the wood. So it, it does, it does bypass those rules a bit. It does bypass that problem a bit. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's the plans that we're working on. We're yep. We're excited about it. We're hopeful, um, but a lot of stuff has to fall into place. Like this house isn't actually ready to sell yet. We have to do some work to it before we can sell it. Yep. Um, yep. And we don't know how the market's going to be looking by the time that's done. If this will still be the case. Yep. So it's one of those things where it's like that'd be very nice, and we hope what happens, and we're we're doing the work that we need to do to prepare the house for sale, but we don't know. We have no idea what's going to happen with that. Yep. But it has been two hours, which is mm-hmm. the time that we have listed as the duration of the show. And it sounds like we're all kind of petering out for very, probably for various <laughs> reasons. So I think we should call it there. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Yeah, it, it has been a big week for us. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, it wasn't one of those. You know, you hear this. Oh, you know, uh, you get back from vacation and you're more tired than you left. Like, I didn't have that experience, but uh, the drive, the driving home was was tiring, and then the the convention over the weekend, obviously took a lot out of us mm-hmm. so thank you very much for joining us uh, 
again um you can join us on discord you can check out tall tales uh we will have other streams scheduled this week tomorrow night is supposed to be couples game night in which carol and i will be resuming i presume i assume uh kingdom two crowns because we still yes. have we still have some of that to play uh we have not probably played. a lot of that to play yeah we haven't beat that game and we don't is there is there a beating that game um as i understand yes there is Oh, okay. There is there is a limited number of islands. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I'm sure I, we can I sprinkle have, in some other games, too, if we uh, get bored of it. Yeah. I, uh, I haven't actually... I have not played it uh, my own playthrough that I was doing without you on Steam. I have not touched it in weeks. Oh, wow. So... Yeah. We're so we'll pick that up tomorrow night, uh, and then Wednesday is my writing stream, and Thursday is in memoriam, the uh, online group with Dave. We'll be playing there. Uh, we have to. Red is currently in, Nashua Center, trying to arrest Commissioner Price, and we are available to offer backup. Next session, we're going to find out how well that's going. So that should be this Thursday. Check that out. And after we resolve that storyline, we're going to do a one-shot that we have planned that I'm very excited about. It takes place in that same world um, and sets up for something that will happen later on in the year. And we're hoping that Skippy will actually have decent video oh, yes. and sound this week. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Dave kind of spearheaded this effort um, in which uh, so if you've been watching if you haven't then go watch it but if you have uh, one of the players uh, has significant computer problems have, has had significant computer problems um, and in terms of connecting and being heard and being seen and all the other stuff uh, and in an effort led by Dave uh the group has bought him a new computer and headset. So uh, the headset can... was was his. Own, uh, he bought on his own. Oh, he bought that. Okay. Yes, he he bought his own headset. He was already planning on doing that when we decided to uh, raise some money to to get him a new system. It's right. nothing special, but it's better than the Chromebook That's that right. he was using previously. So yeah. hopefully, it will be a mark. Um, improvement. But so. yeah, so we're we're excited to find out this Thursday how well that worked, and uh, how how well it how well he connects and how they, how that goes for him. So, so honey, yeah, where can people go watch that? Here. Uh, Here. Yeah, this channel on Twitch. Uh, but also, if you don't catch it live, that's a good. That's what I'm saying. Because you told them to go watch the old ones. That's true. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning how to do marketing. <laughs> so there, there's that link. That'll take you to uh, my web page. Um, it has. You can check out my stories. You can check out the stream archives for a memoriam for couples game night for pineapple for just when i play video games that i decide to stream sometimes with uh sometimes with some of these people and sometimes without um there are various short stories there there's links to tall tales there's information on hiring me to do gm your, your games all kinds of stuff is on that website it's there's a there's a lot going on there um, definitely check it out and check out some stream archives there as well. And one last plug. Um, <laughs> we do raise money for Extra Life. Extra Life is a fundraiser that uh, where we raise money to go straight to Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Everyone who's in tonight's call is raising money for Boston Children's. Other people in our group are raising for Orlando, Buffalo, and San Diego, and Bay State Children's. So check out the team. I just posted the link there in the chat. Check out the team page. Uh, you know, donate to, to some Children's Hospital. Help us help kids. And we will have an Extra Life 
marathon gaming event later this year. Looks like yes, it's be in October. So, all right. Thank you very much, and you have a good night. Good night, folks. Night.